And welcome back to another edition of Completely Unoriginal right here at thecoderbroadcasting.com, your source for everything nerd. We are without Kurt Campbell today. I am Adam St. Paul, and we do have Tony Zur from down in Redfield. Tony, what's up, man? What's up, dude? Glad to have you back. Uh, how you feeling? I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm at about 75%. So. Well, that's good to hear because we've, we've been kind of dodgy lately getting the content out there and... One of the reasons is we've been kind of waiting for you to get back on your feet, and we spoke with you last week, and you still didn't seem kind of, or two weeks ago, rather, it didn't quite seem up to snuff, but uh, you do sound a lot better this week, so I'm pretty pretty happy to hear that. Yeah, and I've been able to get out and do a little bit of stand-up since then and everything, and so yeah, it's, it's, it's getting back there slowly but surely. So again, no Kurt Campbell, as he has the day off here at the radio station, but we got a lot of things to talk about here. You sent me, gosh, just a laundry list of things that we could touch on, and some of them I just want to go over briefly, and that includes Arnold Schwarzenegger... Uh, might return to the Predator series, and uh, also beyond that, it looks like um, Tom Hardy has been confirmed for Star Wars Episode Eight. After that, Dolph Lundgren, I guess, stars in a new straight-to-DVD kindergarten cop movie, and also Daniel uh, Craig turns down the role of James Bond in probably what is the most duh news that there is out there. But uh, I guess let's just, and also uh, last but not least, uh, they have uh, cast a new Han. Solo. I don't really know anything about him. I think we touched on that last time, but uh, I guess we'll start off here. Let's just talk about all of them kind of briefly, and we'll spend a little more time on some of the other ones, but uh, you know, Daniel Craig not coming back to Bond. What is that? I mean, is that not just duh for you? Well, see, for me, I'm a little bit different than everybody else because I actually really, really liked Spectre. I thought that Spectre was that, that, that perfectly combined what Daniel Craig has been doing with Bond and what Sean Connery and Pierce Brosnan did with Bond. I thought that it brilliantly combined those those two aspects of the Bond character. And I loved Spectre. I thought it was better than Skyfall. And uh, and so I'm, I was just, I first I was really, really just kind of disappointed that everybody just hated Spectre as much as they did. And now, you know, Daniel Craig, he's jumping off of the boat because, you know, it's, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to stay on a sinking ship and, and I'm just wondering what they're going to do and, and everything. And, and I hear that Idris Elba is, they, they really want him to play Bond. He, he really wants to play Bond. But then I also heard that, that uh, Puff Daddy wants to play Bond. Uh, Puff you know, Daddy? Yeah. No. Yeah, he, yes, he really wants to play Bond. And they also want to get a female Bond now as well. Mm. And not hating on the women or anything like that, but leave Bond to us. See, now, well, no... Bond. Well, it is, I guess it has nothing to do with Lee Bond to us, but, I mean, like, for, for better or for worse, like it or not, it, I mean, Bond is kind of a kind of a relic of his time because he was written, you know, by a, Ian Fleming who uh, was, I mean, grew up in a different time when women weren't seen in the same light as they are today and whatnot. But that's Bond's character is a womanizer. And I right. guess I guess you could make her a man eater, you know, as it were. But, I yeah, I, I tend to agree with you on that. How about you just write a new... Uh, character who is a female super spy, or give Black Widow her own movie, right? I mean, you, <laughs> you know, even, you could even spin spin off another one, you know, Double O Eight, and it's a woman, you know, something yeah. like that. You just not know. Bond. I mean, just not Bond, because I mean, you got to stick a little bit with the character. And I like, I personally do like Idris Elba um, as Bond. Here's my take on it. I guess a Spectre was okay. I saw it. I'm. I, yeah, it was fine. I guess I, I'm kind of in the boat you're saying you were not part of, that you really enjoyed it. I thought it was okay. The thing, I've never been, honestly, a big Bond fan. I really haven't. Uh, actually, my wife wanted to see Spectre. Before that, I had I have not seen besides any besides Casino Royale with uh, Daniel Craig starring. I know that Daniel Craig has said on multiple occasions that he has no interest in coming back to Bond. In fact, I mean, he said some pretty rough things about it, then kind of backtracked on those, saying that he was just tired and didn't blah, blah, blah. But he has made it kind of no no secret that he doesn't want to play Bond anymore. Um, I'm not really too attached to the Bond movies. They don't do a lot for me. So I'm okay with kind of whatever route they go. I know this might sound sexist. Just don't let it be a woman, but only because I think that you could do, a, you could do women a better service by creating a new and vibrant character all their own rather than just putting uh, Kate Beckinsale in there and slapping the name Bond on it. Well, and it just it just seems to me that Hollywood is trying to force-feed a lot of things, you know, right now. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and, and it's, 
like like you said, you know, as far as as women are concerned and stuff like that, you know, give give them a new character for them to to go off of. And you know, and then, you, but then you also have like you know, oh well, let's 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 make let's 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 make this person gay in the next movie and give him a boyfriend or give her a girlfriend and let's and it just seems like Hollywood's force feeding a lot of stuff to us right now. Where I just think that it would be a lot better if if things came gradually. It know? well, it's well, it's it's not force feeding. It's not Hollywood force feeding. It's people trying to force their agenda on Hollywood. Yeah. And exactly. cuz I know recently a new a new push is uh going to make Captain America gay with Bucky Barnes. That's the latest uh one of the latest trends and stuff. And I I mean, I don't I'm I'm okay with it, I guess. It, I mean, it's not it doesn't bother me in the slightest, but I I tend to agree that when you do things like that, it doesn't, you know, and Kurt and I have talked about this. It's not like, oh, here is this awesome character who is really good at this and has these emotions and feelings and happens to be gay. It's the gay Captain America. Well, I just, I mean, when it comes to Captain America, I mean, I think that, that they should, you know, dive deeper into the fact that, you know, he, he was in love with a woman. That you know that he can't have now because she's eighty years old, you mm-hmm. know, and stuff like that. I mean, you can't just you know, and if they want to make Anna and or Elsa or Anna, you know, and have one of them get a girlfriend or something. Fine, that's you know, that's fine by me. I just I just think that all the all the hoopla behind it kind of just you know, if it just happened and it wasn't so. Well, see, that's about and that's and that's my like, and and that's my point is that you're you're not making these characters you know, gay or whatever it may be different because, you know, that's just who the character is. You're doing it to check a, to, to check a box on a, you know, all right, we got our diversity code checked and now we can move on. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's all these petitions out there to make this person gay or to, you know, to do this or do that. And I just, I just think that it's like you said, it's, it's agendas being forced on Hollywood and, and I am all for the LGBT community. As am I, yes. And and so you know if if it happened, I'm not going to be pissed off about it. I just think that all the hoopla behind it's just kind of ridiculous. Uh, moving on, uh, I I don't really have a lot to say about this. You might have more. Uh, once again, Dolph Lundgren is starring in a Kindergarten Cop two straight to Blu-ray film, I believe. Um, straight to VHS. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, you you sent it to me, so I thought you might have something to say about it. I really don't. What, do you want to touch on it? I honestly just thought it was hilarious. Oh jeez. Out of it, I had a friend that watched it, and she said it was just awful. Because I mean, you know, you never know. It, it could be, you know, it could have been a diamond in the rough, and mm-hmm. you know, somebody could say, you know, hey, it was actually really, really funny, and <laughs> and uh, and you know, so I didn't know, but I just, I just, I just thought it was ridiculous to even think about. Dolph Lundgren has a pool he needs to pay off, and there you go, right there. Uh, <laughs> moving on, I guess. Again, I don't have a lot to talk about in this regard but uh tom hardy has been confirmed for star wars episode four it, who who was it that you have disdain for because they're in everything isn't there someone well it depends on who he's playing you know well no i thought you had someone specifically who you're like i don't know i thought you were like, oh, i'm just sick of this guy because he's just he's just in everything oh I mean, it might have been chris pratt i don't know if that was you but i don't did somebody was you know oh man i'm sick of this because he's just in everything now because tom hardy just seems to be everywhere at this point well i mean yeah he is but hardy actually has been making a lot of b movies lately that people haven't really been going out for like there was a movie that he did called Legend that that I just uh, I just watched not too long ago. It's, Is that uh, him driving the car? No, no, that's the drop. Or so, no, that's not even that's not even that. Um, I don't know what I can't remember the car one, but um, no, Legend is. Uh, it's a, a semi true story about these two uh, mob uh, twin brothers, and he plays both of them. And one of them is really sadistic and psychopathic and violent, and the other one is kind of the brains of the organization and kind of the womanizer and stuff like that. And it was just a brilliant, brilliant movie. And nobody has seen it, it seems. But it's but he's been doing a lot of stuff, and so I'm, you know, but he's he is kind of in the Chris Pratt area where everybody wants them for this, and it's like, who should we have play this? Oh, Chris, you know, Chris Pratt or he, oh, Tom Hardy or something like that. But... I think that Tom Hardy's honestly been turning down more roles in in the blockbusters than he has been accepting them. Uh, that could be true, I guess. I think you're just speculating to that point, but uh, I 
you know, I, I have nothing against Tom Hardy. I would like to know who what he's going to be doing in the film versus, you know, just happy that he's there because if he's there playing a crummy character, Samuel L. Jackson's pretty cool, but Samuel L. Jackson playing Mace Windu is pretty lame. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree. And Yeah, it just it really depends on who he's going to be playing and, you know, just where it's going to go from here with Star Wars. I'm really trying to just not even think about it i'm not going to watch anything because they already have like behind the scenes of episode eight now and stuff like that and like you know mark hamill's posting all these all these behind the scenes pictures and stuff like and i'm not looking or reading or watching any of it because i just i want to have some sort of a child's eye with this one because so much was spoiled with the force awakens for me before the film even came out no i do your best to just avoid the trailers then in general too when they start popping up but uh, yeah man i mean i i might watch like the first teaser trailer and that'll be about it but yeah so i'm 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 skeptical but tom hardy like i said he's been turning down a lot of roles lately and, and choosing some some you know more obscure roles and stuff, but I think that he's just, he's trying to be, he's trying to be an artist. He's not trying to be a blockbuster hero. So I'm wondering what the character is going to be and who he's going to be playing. He, cause, cause I, I really honestly think that, that he's, he's smarter than a lot of the other people when it comes to roles that he chooses. Let's move on from there and go to uh, another Predator movie. Again, this is, see, uh, that's why I want to kind of go through these topics briefly, just because I don't have a lot of passion for them. Even if Schwarzenegger is coming back to the Predator franchise, does it really matter? I mean, they did kind of a quasi-reboot a couple of years ago with, like, Adrian Brody and Lawrence Fishburne where they were on another planet getting hunted. Uh, the Alien v. Predator movies were just awful. I mean, he's a classic movie monster villain, but to me, I, I just... Uh, I think that I think that the the genre has been done to death, and a new Predator movie does not excite me in the slightest. I'll watch the old ones and have a much better time, in my opinion. I am... I am... I'm interested in it because of the fact that Shane Black is doing it, and uh -huh. he was in the original Predator. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, and I know that he he really played tug of war with a lot of different things with the studio as to how he wanted to do it, and so hopefully he, he's going to bring us something that is at least is at least on par with the original Predator and stuff. See, but how do you? I mean, you, you really got to work hard to be different and unique enough to make it work. I thought that the most recent Predator film, they did their best. They tried to make it somewhat different, and it was unique. It wasn't him on Earth. It wasn't him, like, running through a city, you know, and it certainly wasn't AVP. So I, I, I thought they did an admirable job, but at the same time, I just, it, to me, it didn't do a whole lot. Honestly, uh, pred Predators, uh, I, thought, I thought that it was an enjoyable film. Mm -hmm. I, you, know, you know, Adrian Brody did a good job. I think everybody did a really good job in the movie. Um, I'm, I'm always a sucker for Walton Goggins. I think that guy is just hilarious in everything that he does. Um, you know, he, and he's in a lot of Tarantino's films now. He was in Hateful Eight. He was in uh, he was in Django and, and everything. And and I and I love Danny Trejo too. So I mean, I I really thought that Predators did a good job for what they for what they were trying to do. And I thought it was better than AVP. I thought it was better than Predator Two. Okay. So um, so I'm. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see what it's going to be like. All right. Uh, anything else you want to touch on that before we move on to some other topics? I just hope that that Arnold isn't that they're not putting Arnold in as just a. I, I just hope that Arnold's got a little bit of color to him. You well, know, I, you know what? You know what though? What I will say about Arnold is that that terrible Tenet Terminator Genesis movie. Right. I think everyone unanimously unanimously agrees, that even though he's old as heck in the movie. The best part of that terrible movie is Arnold Schwarzenegger. It, well, yeah, exactly. That was yeah, that was the best part of Terminator Genesis. He's just a he's just a likable movie star who y you can't help but just you know kind of kind of smile and and enjoy when he's on screen. Well, and Maggie Maggie was a, was a really was I thought was a really good zombie movie, and I also and I also really enjoyed. Uh, that was really weird. Enjoyed. That one. I mean, it, it was such a departure from everything that he's done, and. and that's I liked it. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, but it was, and I and I I liked the movie more than I liked him being in it. In fact, I thought it could have been probably serviced better had a different person played the father in that movie. But 
I'm I yeah, digress. He's still an enjoyable action action star, but he's trying to spread his wings a little bit. You, if you look at uh, the movie Escape Plan, which was a, which was a, a very very mediocre jailbreak movie with him and Stallone. Mm-hmm. There's that part that I've mentioned before where they're in they're in the the box or whatever, and and he's speaking his native tongue and he's like praying to God and he's crying and. I'm like, wow, that is the most acting I've ever seen Arnold do ever. <laughs> and I was really impressed by that scene. I was like, wow, dude, like Arnold's actually like he actually has some acting chops right here. So I, I I'm interested. I'm interested in, in the new Predator because of Shane Black and Arnold. So. Couple couple of uh, topics to close here. First off, this one really interests me, and that is Andre the Giant's life story is coming to the big screen. I haven't done a ton of research into the story, but for those of you who don't know, Andre the Giant, of course, a, just an enormous man, a, na- a French native who was, of course, uh, was it Fezzik in The Princess Brides, who was the yep. big giant character, and he also was a professional wrestler. And the guy, he he just is, if you've ever read any kind of biographies on him, he's, he's just a live quite the unique life and the only thing i love the idea of him coming to the big screen the only thing i have issues with one who are you gonna have play him because you got to try to match that just size and everything like that you can do camera tricks to probably figure that out as well Jason but Siegel. but two well that'd be probably a good one but two another thing is like he's one of those guys that has become part of history so much that it's hard to discern what exactly is fact and fiction and how they're going to go about trying to sort that out if they care at all. Yeah, it's it's going to be a really interesting story and I just I was reading up after I sent you that link I was reading up on him and and he actually uh he actually fought in the ring in Aberdeen in 1981. No kidding. Yep, yep, him uh he was there, Jesse the Body Ventura was there and a couple other people, but those were the two that I, stood out to me and I was like wow that's really cool that Andre the Giant was in Aberdeen at one point yeah for sure but I mean it's I think that that's that's going to be that's going to be a very interesting very interesting story maybe they'll turn him into a woman or maybe you know (laughs) maybe they'll have Scarlett Johansson come in and play him or something well you know she's taking grief now because uh they're they're claiming whitewashing um, when it comes to Ghost in the Shell, and they're also claiming whitewashing when it comes to the Tibetan monk. They turned it to like a Celtic woman, um, a white woman, Tilda Swinton playing that in Doctor Strange. And, you know, social justice warriors are coming out and, you know, whitewash, Hollywood whitewashing and everything. First off, Japan has come out and said that they didn't have a problem. Japan, has, has, but like people in Japan, they've po- done some polling and they don't care that Scarlett Johansson is playing. Uh, the main character for Ghost in the Shell, they say that she looks like her and they're trying to be faithful. Another thing, if you watch, um, let's see, your Channel Awesome, that guy with the glasses, the nostalgia critic, he did an excellent piece on whitewashing in Hollywood and how we're okay with it sometimes. You know, people want to get on their high horse and, oh, they're using all white people to play Asian characters or something. Well, I don't, I didn't remember anyone batting an eye at using um, just regular people to play the role of hobbits instead of little people. Right. With, you know, oh, well, and, and also, uh, also um, using uh, using the same the same little dude to play all of the uh, all of the uh, the Oompa Loompas in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, they should have. But that, they, but but uh, see, how is that not a form of? It's not whitewashing isn't the right term, but it is a form of whitewashing in that you're getting mainstream Hollywood actors to play roles that you could easily give to little people. Exactly. You know, well, you know, you got you got Tom, Tom Cruise as the you know the last samurai. You got Brad Pitt as the Mexican. You know. <laughs> no, I, I I understand that, but my point is, and and you notice that that one's really easy to notice. But I thought Doug Walker did a good job of showing that. Hey, I mean, how come no one has a problem with that? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know enough about those movies, Ghost in the Shell, and all that stuff. I don't know enough about that stuff to really. To really, you know, put a uh, an intriguing argument out there, all I can say is I hope they do a good job. <laughs> I, I haven't. I I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a huge anime guy either. I haven't actually seen Ghost in the Shell or anything. I just, like I said, heard that story from the nostalgia critic, and I thought that was really well done. But going back to Andre the Giant, I just I hope they can get somebody and they can do enough camera tricks to make it to make it you know real enough looking, and and I just I hope that they do him justice because he was he, you know and if you listen to to you know the, the actors that played alongside of him and also wrestlers and stuff like that everybody says the same thing the man was 
had the biggest had had as big of a heart as you would think he would have. <laughs> you know, he was he was a really really nice, gentle guy, and and you know, like I I uh, Mandy Patinkin uh, was talking about the Princess Bride, and and uh, and and he said, you know, I walked up to to Andre one day, and he just had the biggest smile on his face, and I asked him what what was up, and and he said, I'm just I'm really really happy to be here because not everybody stares at me. <laughs> you know, he had a really big heart. He had a really, you know, he had a really big soft spot to him and everything. And I, I just really hope that they, you know, portray that right on film. For and him. he could drink like uh, no one's business as well. <laughs> Last uh, thing before we uh, let you go here, Tony, uh, Gail Garcia Bernal has been cast as the new Zorro. Apparently they're making a new uh, Zorro film, which right now is just being referred to as Z. And uh, it looks like... Alfonso uh, Cuaron, uh, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing that. Jonas will uh, be kind of taking the helm of this film. I just wonder, do we? Re- why? I mean, I know why they're doing it. Money, and it's a it's a re- recognizable property. But another Zorro movie. When if you look at how uh, Western films have done in Hollywood over the last couple of years, and how they're very, very much not even hit or miss. Most of the time, just miss. I just don't see the point. I think if they do it right, I mean, Antonio Banderas, the the Mask of Zorro, the mm-hmm. first one that he did, that was a really really good movie. It was it was, but it was it was a it was a movie for the whole family. And I'm just you know, and you've had so many different incarnations of Zorro. You know, you have you know the old one, you know Zorro the Gay Blade, who was just you know where he had his twin brother come in and and who was just you know flamboyant and pretty much uh, Liberace on a horse. Um, you know, there's been so many incarnations of him to where it's almost like a Batman Begins kind of thing. For mm-hmm. me. I'm waiting for it to come out and honestly, like, blow everybody away and, and, and see the, you know, the comeback of, of Zorro because it's such a, like you said, a distinguished character, recognizable character and everything. And hopefully they, they can bring it out to, you know, to where it's a Batman Begins or a Casino Royale or something like that where it's a little bit darker, but... You know, but it it really you know brings out that character in a in a different light again. You you're gonna have to go a lot more realistic, and it's been so long since I've seen The Mask of Zorro. I was a kid. I went to it in my hometown movie theater many many years ago, and I, so I don't remember a whole lot about it. But I'm guessing since it was the '90s, and like you said, it was kind of for families. It was probably a lot more campy, a lot more whimsical. Antonio Banderas and uh, what's his name. Uh, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins, Hopkins talk about whitewashing playing a Mexican right there. So you know <laughs> you you got you got all sorts of uh, big stars involved in that one. I guess I could get behind a gritty interpretation of Zorro, and I know not everything has to be gritty. But when you're talking about a Mexican bandit outlaw who wears a mask and you know uh, commits crimes with his sword in the name of justice and whatnot, that to me can be a gritty story. Oh, and it could be a gr- a great gritty story. I just hope that it's not, um, you know, it it doesn't. I just hope they don't they don't do too much with it and make it. Uh, oh God, I had a movie. I had a movie in my head that I was thinking. The of, Lone Ranger, I, maybe or. No, I actually I actually kind of liked the Lone Ranger as as a family film. I actually kind of enjoyed that movie. Everybody else hated it, but I I see I kind of <laughs> liked it. Just you know, my boys and I could sit there and watch it, and they loved it. Mm-hmm. I liked I liked if you remember Hidalgo, uh, which was a Disney film released back yep. in 2004. Viggo Mortensen. I did in that one didn't like have great reviews or everything, but that one I've always enjoyed. Well, here okay, I remember the movie I was thinking of when they redid when they did Robin Hood with Russell Crowe. Oh gosh, that was terrible. I, you know, I didn't mind that movie. It was so that- boring. Oh, come on. It's a Ridley Scott movie. It's going to be boring. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I, I, I just, I hope that it's, it's you know, because there was something about that movie that made it not work for the general audience. Mm-hmm. By, the, by the end of that movie, I was like, well, when's the next one coming out? Because now he is Robin Hood. By the, at the end of that movie is when he is, you know, Robin of the Hood and everything. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully this one surpasses that for audiences and critics. Excellent. Tony, we're out of time here. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I'm, you know, it sucks that Kurt couldn't be here, but next week. Yep, for sure. We'll be back next week right here on this website, uh, dakotabroadcasting.com. For Tony Zur, I'm Adam St. Paul. Until the next time.